we're going to use insert, update, and delete MySQL statements in our Golang web app. So here at slash browse, we're just displaying all the different products in our products table. As you can see, we can insert a new product, we can edit a current product, or we can even delete a product. So let's go ahead and insert a new product. We'll hit up, insert, product successfully inserted. So we'll go back to browse, go down to the bottom, and sure enough, there is our microphone. And if we wanted to edit and update it in our table, just change the fields we want to change, hit update, product was successfully updated. So we'll go back to browse products, and sure enough, our microphone is even more expensive. Now. This one here says delete me, so let's go ahead and delete it. We just click delete. Product was successfully deleted. Back to browse products. And sure enough, now it's gone. Let's take a look at our code to see how this works. So we have our data type product that we're creating, which is a struct with an ID, name, price, and description. And if we take a look at our table, it's ID products, name, price, and description. So it's pretty much mirroring. Mirroring it, mirroring it. And we've covered the connection info in a previous video. Uh, we have a couple different routes here. We're going to look at slash browse. This is so the browse handler is what's showing us all the products from our products table. We go down to it and our statement, we want to select all. So we're going to select all the attributes from all everything from our products table. So we don't have a where here narrowing down our search. It's just going to pull everything. So we're selecting all the call all the different attributes of all the different rows. And we're going to use our SQL.db, we're going to use the query method on it to return all of those rows. We're going to save it into rows. And then remember we have to free up those resources. And then we're going to iterate through each one of those rows and we're going to scan each one of those rows. Remember these have the ampersand because yes, these got these are destinations. And we're going to save that into all the fields of our variable p and eventually we're going to take our variable p and we're going to append it to our products variable which is just a slice of product. And eventually we're going to take that slice of products and we're going to pass that in when we execute our template. And we're going to be using our parsed select HTML file. If we take a look at that, it's going to range through each one of those products. And for each one of those, we're going to be inserting you know, the ID field, the name field, the price, the description, and we have two hyperlinks here as well. So if I go back to the browser, you can see we have an edit and a delete hyperlink for every single one of these. Now each one of these is going to do, going to perform an action on a different product in our table. So the you know this one has to send it to a slightly different path than this one. So, so to achieve that we're passing in our ID products parameter here. We have ID products. We're making that equal to whatever the ID is for that particular product. So that way we can target that specific product and not some other target uh, other product. Uh, same thing with delete. We're going to be passing in that ID and we'll be able to retrieve that later. And of course, we also have our single hyperlink towards the top, which is for inserting a new product. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Oh, I forgot to mention that it kind of looked like buttons a little bit because we're just uh, using a little bit of CSS to make it look better. So if we go to slash insert, it's going to be our insert handler. And notice we're not passing in any parameters there. Otherwise, we'd have to have this other slash. And our insert handler is going to do two different things, depending if it's a get or a post. So if it's a get request, say we had just hit that hyperlink and we have, haven't entered anything yet, well, then we just want to execute our template and pass nothing in. So if we go to our insert.html file, there's our form. So we're rendering our form, 
but we're not going to display any extra information if we're passing it. If we're passing a nil, this is not going to be true, and so this will not be displayed. But anyway, so if we're if they haven't entered anything in yet, they haven't hit submit, we're just going through their through the hyperlink. We just want to show the form. But if they do hit submit, it's still going to go through the same path slash insert, but the method is going to be post instead of get. So if it's a post, this will not wait the true. So this wouldn't be the end of our code. We'd, we'd run the rest of this. So this is for if our form was hopefully filled out. We want to go ahead and parse the form. And we have our, we want to use the form value uh, met, method on our request. And we get our, our name, our price, and our description. And we want to make sure that these are not empty. So if any one of these are empty, we want to go ahead and send it back. We want to go ahead and execute our template again, go back to the insert.html uh, file, and we want to pass in a little message for them. In error inserting data, please check all fields. So we go back to insert. Since we're passing in something, we could say, hey, make sure you check all your fields, and they can reinsert it. Now, we, I don't have, you, ideally you want to make sure you have some JavaScript on your, uh, on your program to make sure they're not pinging, you know, your server with requests needlessly. Because if you need those fields, fields filled, you need to make sure, you know, have some JavaScript to uh, get rid of the extra requests that aren't, you know, that you could just pop up a message saying, hey, fill in all fields. Um, one thing to say right now is that in this uh, tutorial, we are not going through uh, authentication. So deciding who is who and what functionality they should have on your site, that's going to be in a different video. This one is just showing how everything's connected. So anyway, let's go ahead and continue. So we're going to go ahead and prepare our statement. So we're going to return our pointer to our SQL.statement. And remember, we want to use the prepare method you know, if it's not a select statement, we want to use prepare because we want to know, we want to return that statement. And that statement, you know, is going to have methods like dot, uh, exec, which can return a result, which is going to give us a little more information. So um, some people will make an error trying to use query. Uh, yes, insert updates deletes are technically SQL queries, but um, in this package, we're looking, they're intending those to be used by selects, uh, select statements. Um, if someone was doing one of those queries and they're just throwing away that variable, that is bad because anytime you have something that returns rows, rows needs, you know, has those resources that need to be freed up later. So if you're just using an alias to throw that away, it can't be closed later. And you would eventually, you would run out of connections as your server runs long enough. Um, anyway, so we're preparing our statement. And we have a name a, that we're going to insert into the test DB database into the products table, into the field's name, price, and description. Notice we don't have to insert the ID products uh, column because we have an auto increment for our primary key. So it's going to go ahead and give it a number for us if we don't provide it one. And we got, we're going to insert three different values. So We've returned our statement, just labeled it INS. So we remember like, hey, that's an insert statement. Uh, we're of course going to close it uh, down the line. And we're going to return a result and an error when we execute the, when we use our, our dot exec uh, method. And notice we have three different variables we're passing in. But we have to, as many, question marks as we have when we prepare our statement, we need to make sure we have that many variables here or we're going to throw an error. So we're going to get a result and an error. And like we had talked about previously, uh, results going to give us more information uh, via some of its methods. We have a rows effective method and we're going to save that into rows effective. And we're going to check to say, hey, you know, was the error not nil. If it was, if there was a problem, we want to go ahead and execute this. Also, we want to make sure we affected one row because we would, ex when you're inserting, you would expect to 
affect one row. If it is not one, well, we have a problem. And so we're going to execute our template, and we're going to go ahead and it's, it's going to be the insert.html uh, parse file again. So that way they can simply just re enter the information in the form again and get it right. Um, and we're going to give it this little message saying insert. Uh, error, ins insert, uh, error inserting data, please check all fields. So we're going to let them know, like, hey, something wasn't quite right. Go ahead and try again. Oh, looked like I wrote that twice there. Oopsie. And, of course, we just printed it off to show those rows affected. And last inserted is going to be in this situation would be our primary key. Uh, let's go ahead and enter one real quick just to show stuff that gets returned. Back to browse. There's our new product. So that's the ID uh, or ID products uh, column. So we have our 41. And yes, we would expect one row to be affected. So let's go back to our form and let's say, let's take a look at delete. So The delete hyperlink is going to send us a path of slash delete, then it's going to give us an ID products uh, URL parameter, and it's going to be what we're passing in the ID for that URL parameter. So that way, each one of those has a different ID. We can target the specific uh, product we want to. So if we go back to the top, and we look at the slash delete path. Now we have to have this slash here because we're passing in a parameter. So it's going to be different behind each one of them. They might have ID products, but it's going to be a little bit different because each one of these is going to have a different ID number. So this allow. Oh. There we go. So this allows us to have a different for this to still accept um, those different parameters and still handle it with the same handler. So we go down to our delete handler. We're going to go ahead and parse our form. And we're going to use form value to get our product, our ID.product. So if we go back to our select we're going to we have this id products parameter and we're, we're going to go ahead and grab that so and the reason we can use our our request.form value method is it's going to check for get and post so it's going to going to look in both places Form value returns the first value for the name component for the query, post and put body parameters, presence over. So, um, you know, post body parameters take precedence over URL query string value. So it shows that it's looking in both places. It's going to look up in the URL for any different parameters, and it's also going to look in on a post request, it's going to look in the body as well. So that's why we can use our form value to figure out, hey, this is the one that we're going, we want to target. And of course, we're going to go ahead and prepare our statement again. And we're going to delete from the test DB database products table where ID products is equal to whatever number we're passing in, which is going to be the ID that we just snagged. We're going to check for an error. We're going to free up those resources. Um, at the end, 
and we're going to go ahead and on our DEL statement that we created here with db.pair, we're going to run the exec method. And we're going to pass in one variable because we only have one question mark over here. So it's expecting one. We pass in one, and it's going to give us a result and an error. And we're going to get the rows affected. We'll go ahead and print that off. And actually, this one I was just going to show that this is not as good as the other because you might not get an error and might not actually delete it. This one's a little bit better in case it attempts to run and we don't get an error. With this one, we want to make sure that we're affecting one row and we did indeed uh, delete one row. So, and we would just print, hey, error deleting the product if we didn't, we're, it wasn't successfully deleted. And of course, at the end, we're going to go ahead and execute our template. And we have our parse result.html file. We're going to pass in product was successfully deleted. So I'm just using this result.html file, pass in messages, say, hey, was successfully deleted. And we have a hyperlink that can get us back to slash product. And finally, let's go ahead and take a look at our update SQL statement. So if I was going to hit, if I was going to hit edit, it's going to bring up our form. It's going to populate these fields. We're going to look at how it populates these fields because it could be awfully handy. You don't want the user trying to remember what everything was in that product. You want them just to be able to make whatever minor changes they want to, and then you can update it. So this is just pulling in what was already in the table. When we hit update, then it's going to attempt to actually update those in the, in the actual SQL, MySQL table. So. When we click the update hyperlink, it's going to be at this path. And we're going to, of course, have our URL parameter ID products. And it's going to have an ID equal to whatever ID is of that product that we dynamically inserted. Let's go ahead and go back to the top. So at slash update, notice we have this other slash here because remember, each one of these is going to have a slightly different. Uh, you know, parameter for ID products. Each one is going to be a little bit different. We want to handle all those the same, and we're going to we're going to go ahead and use the update handler. Now, when we submit our form, we're actually going to use this handler. So this one, we're just going to use to populate the fields in our form, make it easier on the user. Let's go down to the update handler, and we're going to go ahead and. We're going to go ahead and parse our form and we're going to go ahead and grab actually i don't think we need to use our parse form i believe it still attempts to grab it out of the get so that's probably not necessary anyway we're so at select the form value like we said it looks is or a get request which equivalently this is what it's doing it's going to look up there and say hey there's a parameter i'm going to go ahead and grab that and we can target it with you know, our key, which is just this name right here of our parameter. We're going to go ahead and save our ID. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and use db.query since this is a select statement. And this is query row. So we're only going, to, only going to return one row. We're going to select all of the attributes from the test DB database inside the products table where ID products is equal to whatever we insert. And variable we're passing in is ID since there's only one question mark. It's expecting just one, one variable being passed in. So, and this is going to return a row. Notice that we're not running, there's no row.close. Being we're, when you use db.query, um, there is no row, does not have a dot close method. Uh, being you're only going for one row, it doesn't expect you to keep reusing that resource. So it actually closes uh, that, that connection for us. Um, anyway, so we want our product, 
and we're going to go ahead and scan into that product. So we give it the destination for each one of the fields of our key variable. And then we're going to check to see if there was an error. And if there was an error, we're just going to send it back to slash. We're just going to redirect to slash browse. And 307 is a 307 is just a temporary redirect. But if everything goes well and it is able to scan all those scan all those then we want to go ahead and execute our template use our our parsed update html file and pass in product we go to update as you can see we are passing in for the value for each one of these inputs we are passing in our the name field the price field and the description now just to show uh, one thing, now we hit submit, these are going to be sent via post. So this is going to be sent on the body of that post request. But for our path here, we're actually sending some information through the, through the get uh, method as well. So at the path that we're going at through slash update result, you know, we're going to go ahead and pass in the ID there as well. I wanted to show that you can do this. Um, you can send the data both ways because it's going to, our that form value, it's going to go ahead and look through the get and the post. Now, if you had an ID products field down here, the post will override uh, the get, uh, but you can send it both just as a heads up. This way, um, if we wanted to use ID products, I don't have to have a field here for ID products, you know, where they could change it or mess with it. I'm just going to go ahead and send it that way. Um, Yes, I could very well have just changed my MySQL statement to target it using the name attribute, but I just wanted to show that yes, this is this is possible. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and when we hit uh, submit, it's going to use the flash update result, and we're going to go ahead and pass in a URL parameter with our ID. So go back to the top and look at our handlers. We have our slash update result. And again, like I said, we're passing in that ID products uh, URL parameter. So we have to have this slash here. And update result handler is going to handle that. And this one's going to attempt to put, make the changes and update it in our table. We're going to parse our form. And notice that we're going to use, again, we're going to use r.form value method on ID products name price and description now remember these were in the input so these are going to be on the body of that post request now this one is going to be via the um, get request because remember it's you know it's right here it's a URL parameter but that's no problem it's going to look in uh, both both places r dot form value looks in both places uh, we're going to go ahead and we're just saving our statement into the uh, update statement variable. So we're going to update the test DB database products table. We're going to set name equal to this, price to that, description to that, where ID products is equal to that. Now you want to make sure that you have that where because you don't want to change everything in your, in your table. Uh, anyway, so we have four different question marks. We're gonna, it's going to expect four different uh, variables when we, when we use the dot .exec method. So we're going to go ahead and prepare, and like I said, we're just passing in this up here into there, and we're going to get return error, return our prepared statement, our SQL.statement. I'm uh, going to see if there was an error preparing the statement. We're, of course, going to release those resources uh, when we're done. And finally, we're going to use our statement.exec. And like I said, we had four different things, and these are in the same order as they are up in, that, up in our statement. So you can see name is first, price is second, description, and then ID products of name, price, description, ID. So it's going to go ahead Exec. So we're going to go ahead and execute that. And we're going to get a result and an error. 
and we're going to say for rows affected, we're going to run the, on our result, we're going to run the method rows affected, get how many rows were affected. Since we're updating just one row, we would expect it to be one. So we're going to see if we have an error, and we're going to see, we're going to make sure that it's equal to one. If it's not equal to one, we're going to say, hey, there was a problem. And then finally, we're going to execute our template with our parsed result.html file. And we're going to pass in product was successfully updated. So um, quite a bit here, I guess, in this one video. But just remember that you can pass things, uh, you know, as a get and a post if you want to pass some information. But you say you don't want to actually create a new input uh, for that form. You can do that. Uh, just remember that if you created two of them, that the post uh, would take precedence. Uh, but anyway, like I said, I didn't. Uh, we didn't cover any authentication in this one too, so you got to make sure. And we'll cover that in another video. You want to make sure who could use what uh, functionality on your site. And for all a lot of these queries, uh, there's a lot that can. You got to be careful when running queries because you can change a lot of different things. And we're, of course, using the SQL uh, package. So this is going to help escape a lot of different things that look, you know, when we insert something into, when we're preparing a statement, we're inserting something in, it's going to go ahead and escape a lot of stuff. So if someone tries to run a second uh, statement like drop table or, you know, drop DB or something, you know, behind that to destroy our database, you know, it's going to escape that. It's just going to come through as a string. So um, just things to consider. So uh, there's really a whole lot you can do with this. So, um, you know, play around with it, have some fun with it. Um, hope that was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.